Hello and welcome to episode 30 of Techspert Weekly, which certainly feels like a proper milestone, if only because I thought I would give up on this after three or four of the now we're already balls deep into autumn city season with all of the big global manufacturers starting to show off their latest shiny bits. And ordinarily I would be out in Berlin right now checking out all of the latest tech in a hands-on fashion while fighting the urge to puke up last night's Curryverst and Dunkelbeer overindulgence. Whereas this year, thanks to our great friend COVID, I am instead sat alone at home potentially wearing pants and streaming all these launches over the internet, all while struggling to hold down the previous night's greasy Donna Special and six cans of Stella. So very different and yet so very much the same. But anyway, enough twaddle, let's crack on, shall we? Techspert Weekly! So this week's biggest tech launch of course came courtesy of Samsung who finally stopped teasing us all about its snazzy new Galaxy Z Fold 2 and actually showed us some skin. This all new bendy blower is once again a rather pricey and very shiny brick which can be split open to unveil a freaking enormous secondary display. However Samsung has packed in all kinds of improvements for the second gen effort including a cover screen that isn't comedically tiny and a proper sweeper hinge like the Z Flip for getting all that muck out of the phone's crack. As usual, you'll have to sell a couple of kidneys to actually afford one, not necessarily yours, but it does look like a smart evolution of the original phone, which I wasn't entirely sold of. This one definitely looks like a much better prospect if you do have silly money to spend. And if you check out my full roundup video from Tuesday, you can see me bang on about it for a full eight minutes. Huzzah! And it's also been a great week for PC gaming fans, as well as Nvidia revealed its fresh new RTX 30 cards. Oof! I haven't slapped together a rig in God knows how long, and yet those things got my thighs all a tingling. These wee slabs boast masses of power and the RTX 3070 and 3080 are crazy affordable compared with previous gens at launch. In fact the 3070 will cost under 500 quid despite supposedly packing more GPU grunt than the RTX 2080 Ti. Definitely good news if you want a super powered rig but you've already run low on organs. And as this show goes live on the YouTubes then Honor should be just about wrapping up its own EFA launch as well where we saw the reveal of two new Honor Magic watches and a whole slew of new Magic Book laptops tops as well and I'm hoping to review all of those mother hubbards real soon. And as Aoife is still ongoing you can expect loads of fresh new shiny gadgets that you don't need but really want to launch in the next few days or so so stay tuned for all of that next week. And now it's time for the part of the show that most people don't even see because they already buggered off about three and a half minutes ago. It's viewer comments. Whoop whoop. Viewer comments. <laughs> Now first up we seem to have quite a few scantily clad ladies randomly popping up in the comments from last week saying basically that I'm wonderful and do I love them. And while I'd love to believe that they're all real living breathing human beings who are genuinely infatuated with my rugged northern charms and my deep knowledge of geeky tech stuff, oh f it, they're just bots aren't they? If this is you Putin trying to tempt me with your binary beauties then you can sling your hook. Go on bugger off out of it. Anyway let's move on shall we to what I can only hope and assume is actual human beings. Uh, uh, NC says the best northern presenter since Jim Bowen. That was quite the honour. I will take that me and Jim up there right at the, <laughs> the top of the league. In fact I really should get a uh, speedboat to give away on the channel. That would be freaking awesome. Always love that. Tim and Jenny well done you've won a speedboat. We live in freaking Wolverhampton. Oh and speaking of random obscure celebrities unsurprisingly it's time for yet another less than welcome segment of which crap celebrity do I look like this week? Which crap celebrity do I look like? this week. Uh, G.U.J. Abraham is this week's first guest contributor. He says, may I nominate your lookalike as being Dean or the Dean from Community. I uh, have never seen Community. I'll have to look this up. All right, come on now. Seriously, you guys are just literally thinking of any bald dude who's been on TV and then equating me to them. That's just mean. Uh, next up, Liam says, you mentioned The Rock. I don't know, but I do get a CM Punk vibe, especially when he buzzed his head. You know what? Fair f I'll tell you that. I've been called a lot worse. And next up, Randall Tech Info says, I think you look a lot like a young Robert Redford. Not just Robert Redford, mind you. F 90 years old, whatever he is now. A young Robert Redford. Thank you, Randall. You're my man. You can stay. Uh, Keith says, do you have any thoughts on the Infinix Zero Eight? Um, I'll be honest. I think that's the first I've ever heard of that one. Okay, it looks like a sort of a respectable mid-ranger. I do like the uh, the diamond camera on the back. That's rather snazzy. 6.85 inch screen though. Jesus, that's even more of a handful than your mum. Uh, next up, JD Gids1970 says, you should be the next doctor. Texpertinate. Texpertinate. That's a very good show, JD. And in actual fact, the TARDIS is an awful lot like my pants because it may not look like much from the outside but take a peek inside and your jaw will hit the floor. Uh, next up Francis Mordor says, Dear old Uncle Spurt, old, less of the cheek please mister. 
Uh, what are the best budget headphones or earbuds that you can recommend? If you want proper budget uh, true wireless earbuds, so we're talking sort of sub 50 quid, uh, and I definitely recommend Tautronics. These are the latest ones they've sent me, Sound Liberty 92. I've given them a quick blast. And uh, the Tautronics stuff tends to be pretty solid audio quality for that price. Normally you get quite tinny audio, it's a bit crackly or just sounds full on cack, basically. But yeah, these are good for under 50 quid. If you've got a little bit more money to spend, you've got the likes of the Creative Outlay Gold, which I always bang on about because you've got fantastic battery life, good sound and audio, and that's just the, the all round package for under 100. Uh, next up, Jerry Metal Bortex says, for all the smartphones you reviewed, what do you think is uh, best for a stoned metalhead? Well, you definitely want something that can absolutely justify those sick breakdowns and the really heavy riffage. So for instance, the likes of Sony smartphones are still among the very best for audio. You've got high res audio support. You've got that LDAC action if you're doing a bit of Bluetooth and actual headphone jacks now as well. Huzzah, if you fancy going wired. Although if you're going to be doing a lot of motion, I definitely recommend true wireless earbuds. You don't have the cable whipping up in your face or anything. And next up, Matt says, any updates on when and what we can expect from the Moto G9 Plus? And by merely mentioning its name, I've probably just summoned it into existence. It probably won't come as much of a surprise when I say that Motorola has got a launch planned pretty very imminently, in fact, and that's all I can say on the matter. But definitely stay tuned for more information and some sexy hands-on action. Next up, Matthew says, have you heard any rumblings of any new smartwatches with the updated Snapdragon chip and the next Wear OS? As you're talking about the Snapdragon Wear 4100, uh, the first one has been confirmed as the TicWatch Pro 3, which should be launching in the next sort of month or so. Uh, it'll cost around £300, so it's going to be obviously proper premium, as you'd expect, boasting the, like one of the best wearable chipsets around. And I'm hoping to have that slapped to my pasty northern wrist uh, very shortly, so stay tuned for more on that too. And next up, Stephen Oak says, Please sort out your confused four southern vowels. Plus as plus is fine, but even Jacob Rees Mogg, blah, wouldn't pronounce push as posh or look as lock. Um, yeah, this is the problem. I've been living down south for, for like 15 freaking years now, so my accent is more borked than Donald Trump's hairdo. So down here, I sound like some sort of weird Midland slash Northern twat, and up there, I sound like some weird posh Southern git. So I don't, just don't really fit in anywhere, to be honest. And uh, next up, Avi says, if curry is really the only thing that you ate in India, you didn't really explore the Indian cuisine. So sad. Come again after this pandemic and visit Northeast India and South India. So yeah, I probably did slightly exaggerate my curry consumption when I was traveling through India. I didn't quite have it three meals a day, although I did eat an awful lot of that stuff. Uh, but I also remember shoving lots of delicious grilled meats and pancakey things into my face at a regular interval. And I did manage to stumble my way down south to the sort of Kerala region and ate an awful lot of fish curry, which is absolutely the bomb so good and thinking about like the restaurants i ate in over there and everything it's got me having weird flashbacks to the moments i stumbled into a dry county by accident i didn't even know these were a thing uh, before I started traveling around India, this is how completely ignorant I was. And the thought of not being able to buy booze anywhere for a couple of days just filled me with absolute dread. Uh, but thankfully, a lot of the restaurants were still happy to serve you up booze. But weirdly, in the dry counties, they served up the bottles of beer in a brown paper bag, as if that was then all right. You know, if the cops came flooding in to, you know, sort of check that they weren't illegally selling alcohol, they'd just see you drinking out of a brown paper bag and assume it was like lemonade or something. And that always tickled my fancy, anyway, usually because I'd had about eight or nine these brown paper bag efforts. Uh, next comment from Nick says, Hey Chris, you big hairy ball bag. Great start. Uh, OnePlus have said that I shouldn't put my OnePlus 8 onto my car's wireless charging plate as it may cause damage. Is this true? Or are they just trying to say you should have bought the 8 Pro? You miserable old git. Well, it's definitely a, a new one on me, mate. I don't see how putting a phone that doesn't have wireless charging onto a wireless charging plate could in any way harm it. It's just not going to be able to obviously absorb the electrical charge that's being pushed out. So my verdict, big old stamp of a uh, big bag of bollocks on that one, but I could be wrong. I've certainly never heard of this issue. If anyone out there has heard of it, definitely please slap it down in the comments and we'll cover it again next week. And uh, time has once again escaped us. Um, so thank you very much to everyone who commented last week. Sorry if I didn't get to your comment. Please do comment below. Smash through as many of those as possible next week. Uh, I've also had lots of comments uh, asking for a review of the Izu Zenfone 7. I'll definitely try my very best. Hopefully, touch what I'll be able to get one in next week if God is actually smiling on me instead of dropping trout and squatting over me as usual. And speaking of next week, hey, lots more launches. So what have I got here? Monday, Xiaomi is unveiling the Poco X3 NFC. It looks to be the world's first smartphone rocking the impressive sound in Snapdragon 732G uh, from Qualcomm. You should find that in a lot of 200 to 300 pound smartphones in the coming months. Uh, basically anything that doesn't have 5G, but you still want decent sort of performance, especially for gaming and the like. And as with the Redmi 9 that I just reviewed, they've also found room for a massive 5,000 milliamp battery, so it should keep you going for a couple of days between charges, and some serious camera tech too, so hopefully 
get my mitts on that soon. On Thursday, it's Huawei's massive developer conference, as always, uh, so they'll be revealing some new tech, including wearables and laptops, as well as divulging more information on the latest Emotion UI update uh, for all of its smartphones as well. So stay tuned for sexy coverage of all of that, and no doubt plenty more launches spread throughout the week as well. So that's me done. Thank you very much for tuning in and sticking with me thus far as well. Have yourselves a lovely weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.